What's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to use custom keyboard shortcuts in Ableton Live. So if you've been using Ableton for a while or really any DAW, you know that keyboard shortcuts are key. But really the best way to speed up your workflow in any DAW is to learn some keyboard shortcuts. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I use Ableton's key map mode to create a couple of my own custom shortcuts that really help with my workflow and hopefully will help with yours too. But before we get into that, please like this video and subscribe for more great music production content. All right, so here we are in Ableton. I'm gonna show you how you can use this key map mode to make custom shortcuts. So to access the key map mode, you're gonna press Control K, Command K on a Mac. I'm using PC, so I'm gonna be referencing Control for most of these shortcuts. And on the left, you can see there's a list of all of my key mappings that I use. So if you wanna pause the video here, check out these settings if you want my exact settings that I use. So let's see how we can enable this feature and use it for custom keyboard shortcuts. So any of the red areas are mappable to a key, thus creating a keyboard shortcut. So what you're going to want to watch out for a couple things is that these keyboard shortcuts are case sensitive. So a lowercase letter and uppercase letter are going to be two different shortcuts. For example, A or Shift A. You also want to make sure there's a feature in Ableton, this keyboard up here at the top. You can enable that by pressing M as well. This is the mode to turn your computer keyboard into a MIDI keyboard. So by pressing keys, when this is enabled, I'm gonna be actually playing notes. So you wanna keep that in mind when making your shortcuts because the top row of letter keys become piano notes. And the other thing you wanna keep in mind is that you're not gonna get any kind of warning if your shortcut conflicts with a current shortcut in Ableton. Let's go back to key map mode, control K, or pressing this key icon at the top right. So the first one we're gonna go over is record, to start recording. So for this, I use R, lowercase r. And you can see I have it right here. And the way that we map this, let me delete it, is you select the control that you wanna map. It's highlighted in yellow. So I'm gonna select record and you press the key you wanna map it to, R. And now it's mapped. So I can go out of this mode, control K again. When I press R, we're able to record. So another one that I do is the metronome. So I have the metronome mapped to the letter T. And that allows me to turn the metronome on and off by pressing the letter T. So if we go back and I hit playback, uh, I can toggle the metronome on and off with T. So a couple other ones that are really useful is for the locator, which is this set icon here on the right. I have this mapped to V. So when I'm listening back on my tracks, uh, I can just hit V. It'll make a locator there. You can also hit V again to remove the locator. Another one that I use a lot is setting the punch in and punch out locators to on. So when I'm recording audio, I'll usually, like if we want to punch into a section, I'll hit control L to loop it, to select that section. There's no control to turn on the punch in and punch out switches. So I have those set to brackets so I can easily turn those off and on. One that I also use is the capture icon up here. Have that mapped to K. And what the capture does, if you don't know, Ableton is always listening to your MIDI input. So if you're just you know messing around on the keys during your song, trying to figure out some song ideas, Ableton is always listening to that. You can capture that information that Ab Ableton is always listening to by pressing this capture key up here. So if I'm just playing chords on the keyboard, whatever it is, I can just hit K and it's gonna capture that MIDI information into a new MIDI clip. The last one we're gonna talk about uh, requires an extra step because it works in conjunction with a Max for Live device that I purchased and I have in my Ableton set. So the Max for Live device is called Clip Gain. I'll link it in the description. I don't get anything if you buy it, it's I think $3, but it's I use it all the time. It's really sped up my workflow. So it's definitely worth the $3. And I put it into my master track and it's on you know every Ableton Live set that I create is this clip gain plugin. And what it does is allows you to key map any of these buttons here in the plugin. So what I use it for is 
mapping the gain control. So let's record. I'm just going to record uh, some audio really quickly. So recording audio, there it is. So traditionally in Ableton, in order to edit the gain of this clip, you have to click the clip, go down to the bottom left and adjust the gain here. So what this plugin allows you to do is key map that gain control to a key. So I have it mapped to G. And when I hit that, it pulls up this little gain control and I can adjust the gain from here. This is, when I found this, it, it's huge. It's such a time saver. Because now when I'm editing audio, especially vocals, when you're editing uh, certain words to be louder or what have you, you know, I can just go in and break up clips like this and I can adjust the volume of each one, however I want it to be louder or softer. And it saves all those clicks from having to go here, down here, and edit it from there. So the last thing we want to talk about is how we're going to use these keyboard shortcuts in all of our live sets. And that's by saving them in your default set. So I don't really have a template uh, for effects or instruments or anything, but I do have a default set that has some Max for Live devices in it, the clip gain one that I mentioned, and it has all of my key map keys saved to it. So how you're going to implement this is you're going to open up a new live set. You're going to do all the key mappings that you want. And once you're finished with all of those key mappings, you're going to go up to file and save as a default set. So that every time you open up Ableton, you're going to have these key map shortcuts by default in your session. So you won't have to uh, set them every time you open up Ableton, which is the other alternative. So thanks again for watching this video. Again, please like and subscribe to the channel for more great music production content. Hopefully these keyboard shortcuts helped you out in your workflow like they helped me out in mine. If you have any suggestions for really cool shortcuts that you figured out, please put those down in the comments and I'll see you again in the next video.